right, so I just barely finished my first video that went up yesterday, Friday, and today is Saturday, and I'm uploading um, a specific video about my exact symptoms in the order in which I experienced them and in the order of severity. Um, the best I knew how to explain. So this is kind of long, but I take you through like what I tried, what didn't work, what um, tests I had, what the results were, um, that kind of thing as I kind of explain my symptoms. So hopefully this is helpful to hear somebody else's symptoms, but this is coming from a person that um, I have confirmed blood tests that I have 50 points above what is the end normal. Um, my toxicity is, if you're really curious, it is 73.0. And the end of normal is 21.7. Um, I wanted to kind of explain to you how much um, of the vitamin that I was taking and I'll get that information um, I'm gonna grab my vitamins in the cabinet that I still have, um, that I have the bottles, and then I'll tell you the one that I, I took two bottles of and I no longer have, I ran out. So I'll explain to you the B6, the milligram or whatever inside of those. And I'll, I took it for a year. I took the, the one that I don't have for a year and I took this one, these ones that I have for like the last, I'd, I'd say like three or four months. So over the course of a year, this is what, what I've been taking. And it's been sporadic. It was like the recommended dose of the one that I don't have anymore is two pills a day. But I was kind of like scared that I was going to get pimples from like the B12 in it. So I would take one pill a day. Sometimes I would feel really bad and like low energy. And I'd take the next day, I'd take two pills. So it wasn't consistent that I took two pills a day. And it wasn't consistent that I took it every day, but I took it over the course of a year and I finished two bottles and then I, I have these. And um, so yeah, I'll get you that information before we get into the symptoms. So I didn't have a confirmed deficiency in anything when I first started taking this. I never got my blood drawn. I just kind of like found a TikTok that was like, hey, if you are switching from birth control to no birth control, you're gonna have a depletion of vitamins because your birth control leaves you depleted. And it explains part of your fatigue, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying what I just barely said is true, but that's what I'm saying. That's what was kind of like the thought process of fixing something of during the time where I was transitioning. And like, this is why I started taking this pill. Um, I don't think I was super excessive when it came to like eating B6 food. And so like, I don't know, but like, I don't think that I was. Um, but I, again, I never really kept track of it until like the last week or so. And so like, I didn't, I don't know. So I could be lying to you. I could have had like this huge amount of B6 in me the entire time. And then I started taking this supplement. But what I kind of sort of know about B6 toxicity is that it comes from like the use of supplements like over and over and over again, kind of like builds up. I took this, this is Metagenics. This is a phyto multivitamin. This is what the bottle looked like when I was taking it. I ordered it on Amazon. It was about 70 something dollars. So it was pretty expensive. And it was touted as pharmacy grade, which meant to me, um, because the TikTok person was a pharmacist, or like, no, something grade, doctor grade, something grade, higher grade, it was packed full of vitamins. So the vitamin B6, it's in the form of, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this and you can kind of laugh at me if you want to, but there's a couple different forms of B6. In this particular one, there was two tablets that you could take as a full serving size and sometimes I took them as one tablet, like I said, and sometimes I took it as a full tablet and sometimes I just skipped days altogether because I kind of forgot. Um, but the B6 in this one is pyridoxine, HCI, and it was 25 milligrams, 
which is 1,471% of your daily value. Now, once that ran out after I took um, the two full bottles of that over the course of the year, I went to this and this was uh, Methyl Life No Folate or B12, non-methylated multivitamin because I was scared that I was getting pimples because of B12. So I was taking B12 in this in this supplement thing that I just really talked to you about. This one has B6 as P5P. And this one has 5 milligrams, which is only 294%. So as you see, it's not super high. It's not 100 or 200 milligrams, but it's still over my daily recommended dose. Um, by kind of a lot so five milligrams in this one in my research I've seen people take hundred milligrams every day consistently for 10 years and that's how they got toxic but like mine was 25 and I only took one pill so you can half that 2.5 I don't know if that's actually how it works but the serving size I only took was half um, and then this one was five. And then this one I took for the least amount of time and I took it the most spotty. And I'm almost done. I'm not gonna take these obviously, but I'm almost done that and I've had this for a year. So I didn't take this consistently, thank God. But this is what I had the most of um, as far as my B6. And then this one is vitamin B6 as pyridoxine hydrochloride USP. So this one was 50 milligrams and almost 3,000% of my daily recommended value. You only need a tiny bit. <laughs> you need a tiny bit of B6. So anyways, that was my um, context for the symptoms that I'm about to tell you. And I wanted to kind of give you the most information on my consistency in taking these supplements, what my um, B6 intake was like before, like food wise or energy drink wise, I wasn't like an energy drink guzzler. And I don't think that I really overdid it with the B6 food, but um, maybe I did, I just didn't keep track of it. You know what I mean? I made a list last night because I was like, if I start to get better, um, and I don't remember every little thing that like led me up to this, then that's not helpful. So I wanted to be the most helpful to somebody if um, you came to this video because you wanted to kind of like see how it affected me and kind of see if this is maybe something that would affect you. The, the, the complicatedness of, of this is, is that B12 and some other things could also explain a lot of these symptoms and so it's like important to get a bunch of tests and it's important to like understand what's going on in your body and like part of this can be explained by like autoimmune diseases and stuff like you know or cancers or something like this isn't just where you should stop looking this is my path to like how I found out this part of my problem. And um, it's not probably, it, it's not like the only thing probably wrong with me, but it is something and I wanted to share my symptoms. So I put them in a Google Sheets. So I'm gonna read it to you. I almost never read to you um, something that I wrote down because most of my stuff is like off the cuff and it's more like anecdotal and I want to be very like factual and I want to also be kind of thorough and part of what is happening to me right now is that I forget a lot of stuff and so it was important to me to convey to you the most context that I could if you were interested in this part. So I'm like I haven't been talking about um, the things that have been happening to me like I have touched upon some things, but um, I also have been kind of like keeping a lot to myself and you'll sort of see that. Um, but this is what prompted me. You'll see why, but this is what prompted me to like seek answers even though other people were not helping me and to delay 
treatment with carnivore diet um, without knowing anything because I could see once I discovered that B6 had like a duality to it, I could see if I just did the wrong thing that I could become worse. So anyways, these are the longest symptoms that I've had um, that I kind of like dealt with that were chronic that I have been continuously trying to go to the doctors for over the last two or three years. Now, these things, they may or may not be explained from my B6 toxicity. I do not know when I became B6 toxic. I have never been tested for B6 until I paid for the test myself, just barely. So I've been going to the doctors for I think two or three years now and I've had good relationships with my PCP when I lived somewhere else and I had tons of panels done but none of them were B6. So I have nothing to compare this to and so I have no point in time that I could pinpoint this is when it happened. So I think it's important for me to kind of tell you my longest chronic things and um, I don't actually know for sure if that meant that I was toxic then or I was starting to be toxic or this is what made my body susceptible to toxicity. I have no idea, okay? So what I do know is that this is what happened. So I noticed that I had a slower than normal digestion and that turned to constipation for a few years. And so it was so strange that I actually got an app. I got an app for pooping on my phone. And I've had this app for at least, uh, I'd say at least two years. I could go back into the app, but the one that I have is called BM Pro. And it literally just like, is a little thing. It looks like this. And every single day, I track whether or not I've had a bowel movement. And um, I don't track my water intake or anything, but I was noticing that something was changing and that it's not normal to like not go to the bathroom on a regular kind of schedule. And I wanted to have more information. And so I was, I was uh, using this app as an awareness tool. And so that's kind of like what I like to do. I like to bring awareness to something once I've noticed something. And then um, it's not like I'm trying to see a pattern, but it's like I'm trying to be aware of what's happening in my body and I'm trying to listen to it. So I've had this app for a couple of years because that was one of my longest, um, my longest uh, symptoms. All right. So I had a loss of taste and smell that was noticeable since 2019. Um, really after the first time that I had COVID and uh, I never really attributed it to anything else besides COVID, but having, I guess, something to do with B6 um, can kind of mingle in your loss of taste and smell. And so I'm hoping that once I get rid of my toxicity that it would improve, but um, it could be also just because I it lost that ability or diminished that ability greatly during the time that I had COVID, like four years ago. All right, I always woke up feeling like I was poisoned or hungover, but I never drank. So that was one. I've had bad HRV scores for four years and they were in my 20s and 30s and never above that. They've also been consistently that way. And so if you Google, is an HRV, a heart rate variation. If you track that, I track that on two different devices and I have for years. Um, I've always had low HRV. And again, I'm not saying that this was from B6 toxicity. I'm just saying that there was something kind of maybe wrong with you know, the way that my body worked. And this is what I was noticing. And I was noticing it because it was different than all the other friends that I had that track their HRV also. But the internet made me believe, and this could still be true by the way, that everybody has their own baseline and maybe my baseline of what was normal and healthy in my HRV um, data is that I'm just only below 50 all the time. 
and so it's only been very recent that like within the last i'd say week or so since i've stopped taking any supplements and i've started to try to be very mindful of the b6 that's going in my body um mine is 40. one time or two times recently sort of it was 50 but it's never been above 50. so it'll be interesting to see if later on in like about six months what my normal baseline is once i start treating my myself and getting sorted out um or if my baseline really was just 20s and 30s so that's something that i noticed and i always always tried to like improve it but the things that i was trying to do never really improved it it was always consistently between 20s and 30s sometimes it was lower um, I've had a whoop. I had access to different sleep metrics. So my whoop tells me Instead of my aura ring my whoop tells me this specific metric called stress and I don't know what is defined as stress and um, How they measure it, but I have been noticing that I've always slept stressed Always slept stressed my stress levels, I think it goes from like one to three or something, like in a person that gets like pretty decent sleep and a person that um, feels rested, has like zero stress at night. Like it's not zero because you're alive, but it's like, you know, below one. It's like a flat below one. Mine was like this. I slept stressed a lot. So I also have been noticing since I stopped taking supplements and being more cognizant of the B6, I have been sleeping stressed free um, compared to what I was doing right as I was gearing up to get tested for my blood on Monday. That was like for days I had lots and lots of stress. So honestly, I don't know if that's just because I didn't know what was wrong with me or I felt that there was something wrong or like, I don't know not sure but that's something that i noticed and that was one of my longest symptoms i just noticed that i always slept stressed even if i wasn't stressed during the day like i'm not a stressed person i don't have generalized anxiety i don't really have an answer for why that happened like i slept stressed all the time basically i felt weird in my body like my brain and my body were not friends um, almost like watching my life be being trapped inside my body um, That I felt like that kind of a lot in fact like I would kind of like On the down low because I know it sounds psychotic. I would kind of talk to my um, Closest friends that like knew me and knew that that wasn't like something that I should go into the psych ward for I would kind of like tell them or like ex like ask them I'd be like hey have you ever thought that like maybe you were part of the Truman Show? Like, have you ever thought that this was like um, a glitch or like this is like a simulation? Like I actually felt that there could be evidence for that. It's not like I thought about that for a long period of time, but it's like my body was so not connected to my, to my, the way that my mind felt that it just felt weird. And like, I think that there's a word for it. It's like depersonalization or D something. Um, but I didn't know that at the time when I was like kind of like having these talks with my friends and I had these talks maybe about six months ago, but I felt like this kind of um, not conspiratorially or whatever, but I just kind of like would eventually sometimes get these ideas that made sense to me at the time based upon how my body was connecting to my mind. And I was just exploring the possibility and I just kind of like wanted to kind of like almost reality test myself And so I would ask the closest friends to me like Do you think this is possible and they'd talk to me about it <laughs> And not in like a judgy way Sometimes it would be kind of funny. They'd be like Michelle you should tell people that and I'd be like well um, I don't genuinely believe that I'm just trying to like Express to you that I'm thinking right now that it could be as possibility. I don't have any other symptoms of like psychosis Right, so like I don't think that there's like a, a, a big problem with my mental status I'm just this is a weird kind of thought and I wanted to Not have it live only inside my head. I wanted to kind of talk, talk to somebody else that I trusted about it 
So the reason why I'm kind of like telling you that that um, vulnerable piece of information is because later on I learned that that's sort of like a normal symptom, not a normal symptom, but it's a symptom of um, B6 toxicity and I think um, deficiency. But anyways, moving on, because we got a lot to go through. Um, all right, so I had a spot on the back of my head, right on the nape of my neck that was itchy. And so when I lived in the desert, it would get worse in the winter when it was dry, because it was always dry there in the desert. The humidity level was like really low, obviously. Um, and so it was almost better for my skin there. And so like I had had the itching on the back of my neck, uh, like it's on the back of my scalp, like the nape of my neck in that two that both areas and so it's like bilateral it's like if you like cut my like brain down the middle it's like equally on both sides and it's like it's like this um like it like hugs the curve of the nape of my neck right around my hair and like my hair follicles and so i have had problems with that itching and problems with that creating like red spots on my neck for like years and it got so much worse when I was very very close to getting my blood drawn meaning I was probably very toxic at that point and that was when it came right out to play and so I don't know if that means anything but that's one of my longest symptoms all right so I had a history of thrush meaning I took steroids after I had COVID for the last time a couple of years ago and immediately after I stopped the steroids, I got thrush and I had to be treated for like two weeks. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because I also have thrush today. So um, it's kind of like a thing that's sort of been happening in my body. Um, I'm a little bit prone to whatever causes thrush. Um, I started to lose hair. So around the same time that I started to bleach my hair is around the time that I noticed that my hair was thinning versus when I didn't bleach my hair and that's kind of like a no brainer. But like I go months without bleaching my hair and I let my hair root, uh, grow out soft and it like kind of is nice the way that I do it or whatever. But, and like the bottom layer only gets kind of like bleached like once a year. And so I'm almost, I almost like treat my hair more nice than had I had like a, a hairdresser that like went over my bleached hair over and over and over again. So if I understood, if I compromised it with bleach and didn't take care of it in like the, the off season of not bleaching, then I understand the hair fallout. But I've had hair falling out a lot so much so it's like noticeably more so within the last i'd say six months like that it's all over my car it clogs up my Roomba it's um like on a daily basis and when i wear short sleeves or no sleeves i it like tickles my arms so much because new hair is just falling off if i go like this most of the time i have hair that just kind of like shedding all the time i don't know if you see that that's just, I, and I already took out a bunch of hair. So I used to have pretty thick hair and now I don't. Um, take what you want from that. And again, I'm not saying that these things cannot be explained by other root causes. I'm just kind of telling you what's happening in my body that's noticeably not right. All right. So now we're gonna um, jump to the symptoms that I experienced leading up to my worst months, meaning like kind of like before two months ago, less than a year ago, but before two months ago, because my symptoms changed very dramatically two months ago and that really catapulted me into wanting to like go check this out. So at first I had numbness in my left arm like general kind of feeling of numbness and I thought I slept on it wrong and I thought that it, I was just like I was doing a lot of planks at that time and so I, I didn't know if like I had a pinched nerve 
or if I had like something from like just working it kind of weirdly because I never really did planks in all of my life until I started doing planks maybe about six months ago and then I stopped doing planks and all sorts of um, lifting um, after I got this uh, weakness in my left arm and that's kind of scary because if you have weakness and then chest pain especially on your left side um, that's an indicator of like heart problems right probably gonna have a heart attack well that was scary for me and so like I didn't really know what to do I just knew that this was not right so that was one of my first things and then I started to get in April I started to get a pain in my left bicep when I went like this or if I tried to like put um, something heavy and like move it with my arm, um, even like my water bottle or something, I would feel this like specific pain in a specific part of like this part of my arm. And I did not injure myself and you would think that an injury would actually heal. It's been since April and uh, so that's about four or five months now and it still is the same amount of pain and it still is in the same exact spot and never really got better so that was one of my symptoms is my, one of my symptoms um i couldn't tell when the water in my shower or when i was washing dishes or washing my hands i couldn't tell when the water was too hot the only reason i know that it was too hot was because i had guys over and when they would wash their hands after I was washing my hands, they would like jump back and be like, what is going on? Or when um, like they'd like turn the, the faucet and I'd be like, you're just a pansy. Like I just thought that, you know, it, was, it wasn't even hot to me. Or I would be in the shower with somebody and be like, oh, I forgot you're the girl that likes really hot showers. And I'd be like, no, it's kind of like normal. But my shower was cranked to like the top level of hot because I just thought that my heat, like my, my water didn't get that hot. I didn't know that it was like scalding. I had no idea because it didn't feel scalding to me. But like they were like, I need to get out of the shower, <laughs> right? So like it wasn't, like it was only because of them that I really understood because I live alone um, and, and you know, I didn't know. So that's how I knew. Um, then one of the things after my arm situation happened, the next thing that happened was I had pain in my neck, my cervical spine. So that was when I needed to go to the doctors and I had pain. So I asked my doctor um, if they could help me with the pain. And I kind of like had told the doctor, like I just feel in general, like I don't feel well. And then on top of not feeling in general well, this new symptom has come along and that was the stiffness in my neck and um, I had an x-ray done eventually after um, nothing improved with um, the massage gun like it did improve but like it never just like went away so for like about three or four weeks I had neck pain and stiffness of the neck so much so that my mobility was greatly diminished like when I was in my car and I had to see if somebody was behind me in my blind spot oh god <laughs> not good so that was that hurt a lot um, around that time um, I didn't really know what to do and so I was taking a muscle relaxer a couple of times I didn't take it very often but I noticed that it, it wasn't helpful and so I stopped taking my muscle relaxer but I, I was taking ibuprofen around that time because it was just very painful in like my neck um, and I didn't sleep very well. So then after it randomly moved, my pain stopped. My pain randomly moved to the middle, lower part of my back. And um, that was when I had to go back to the doctor. And I was like, look, this is what's happening now. And like, I didn't really do anything to fix where my pain was before and like i have nothing to explain why it doesn't hurt now but it doesn't hurt now my pain has moved here and um that's when they were like you should go to pt you you probably have some sort of um pinched nerve and i believe that because it kind of made sense and um that's when i also went to a spine specialist because I advocated for myself that 
well, maybe just going to PT was not enough. I should probably go see why my spine was acting weird and if I had like slip discs or something. So I finally was, after much prodding from myself, I went to the doctor, um, the spine specialist, and they didn't find any indicator that I had MS. They didn't find any indicator that I had really anything wrong with me. And I was like, look, there's something wrong with me. Can you please at least give me some tests so we can look into something? It was only from my prodding, asking for tests while I was there after they told me, no, there's nothing wrong with you that we can kind of help you with. Um, I was like, look, there's clearly something wrong. So from, from my basically begging at the end of the, um, the appointment and they saw my frustration on my face, um, I was I asked them what I could do and that's when they ordered me um, a lower a lower spine I don't know what it's called the thoracic area I'm not sure the lower vertebrae I got more testing I mean not testing but I got more x-rays done there and I got an EMG I think that's what it was that's when my nerves were poked and prodded with little baby um, electrodes of energy <laughs> and that was helpful but also not helpful because it basically said I was medically fine there was nothing really wrong with me that could explain my symptoms okay so that's kind of like where I was at so then my spine kind of like felt okay so but during that time where I was kind of like shuffled between the tests I couldn't sit down or lay down I could like lay in my bed and I couldn't sit on the floor and I couldn't sit on the couch. It was very uncomfortable to just be in my body because it was painful. So that's kind of like what was going on. My, my muscles really, really hurt and my, my tailbone really, really hurt. And um, I didn't do anything that had caused an injury. Um, and they couldn't find a pinched nerve and they couldn't find the problem they just said I was kind of like structurally okay right so then I noticed that I couldn't tell when I was hungry and I couldn't tell when I was tired do you remember that I kind of talked about I couldn't tell like I my body and my mind were not really connected that well it was so not connected that well um i either didn't have any appetite and so therefore i couldn't tell that i was hungry or like i didn't get the signals that my body was actually like sending because i noticed that i would eat like maybe once a day or something and um i wasn't really that hungry by like midnight but how did it get to be midnight i didn't even know that like i was tired before i was like kind of like a creature of habit and I would go to bed around like 10 p.m. sort of all the time, right? So it was weird for me to just to like randomly accidentally stay up from midnight and then to one and then from one to two and then to not be able to sleep. So I'd wake up around three or four, sorry, I just spit everywhere, around three or four and then not be able to go to bed. And so this kind of like continued. Um, it wasn't every day that I like, noticed that I couldn't tell that I was hungry or tired, but it was like enough so that I noticed that it was like a weird thing. Like I just didn't get the right signals in my body. Um, this was around the time that before my legs had a numb feeling, they had an itching feeling. And during one of my doctor's vis visits, the shins, the front of my legs and my lower legs um, they itched and I, I was like putting like lotion on them because I thought it was just like eczema or something I thought it was like the similar kind of stuff that was on the back of my head like my legs itched only on the front part that would eventually be the part that was numb and um, where the tingling was and so I don't know if that's like the first symptom of like when uh, the neuropathy is like starting or whatever, but like I noticed that there was itching, like weird itching that kind of like I'd never really had before. Um, I'm not really an itchy body kind of person except for my head. So that was kind of something that I noticed. 
and then like I said my lower legs below my knee like the shins up until like where my ankles are is where the um, the numbness only the front of my leg the back of my leg mostly fine I didn't really feel any part that was like all the way through into my leg was numb only like I'd say like the top like layer if that even makes sense was numb or like it felt desensitized to the touch it was like noticeably weird like I felt like when I walked around outside that my legs were heavy I guess some people feel like they're walking around with mittens on or they're walking around with socks on when they're not because of this problem like I don't think it got to like where it was like just my foot or just my leg um, the last two months I had really bad anxiety only around what was medically wrong with me and this kind of makes general sense like if you kind of are noticing like hey when I go to bed at night I get kind of chest pains and it might be like a heart attack <laughs> um, that's pretty like severe but like what it was not normal was like I was like bringing up all these ideas of what I could possibly like explain what was my problem it was told to me I might have MS it was told to me that um, I had nothing wrong with me, yet I was experiencing all these symptoms. I was like, like I was getting anxious and my anxiety was only around what was wrong with me. It wasn't generalized anxiety. It wasn't like during the day when I was like working on other things. Of course I was stressed, but that's different than anxiety for me. So I had anxiety specifically only about two months ago, as these things got worse and I'd never really experienced like anxiety like that um, I was sort of scared to go outside because of the heat and just the weird feeling of doom so like I'm a little bit agoraphobic or something and it's just around like when I go to sit outside even if it's in the shade and it's kind of like during the day um, my body like doesn't know how to sweat properly and so it either sweats too much or doesn't sweat at all and so the other day i like sat outside in the shade on my porch and it was around 70 something degrees outside which is relatively cool for here and i was sweating on the back of my back so much sweat and so like it gave me anxiety to like go outside to like go walking even though i really love to go walking outside in the sun it gave me anxiety because like I didn't know how my body was going to react. Part of my anxiety about what was happening also was that like I lived alone and if something like happened like a heart attack, I like I wouldn't really have like a lot of like help and that kind of created a lot of anxiety. So like I'm not saying that my my thoughts didn't make logical sense. There was a fear that I was attaching to my anxiety for like reasons that you could follow. They weren't like crazy like anxiety, um, it made sort of sense, but I just never really had those fears before. And like, I just never was really consumed by a lot of these like thoughts. So it was just different for me. And that's kind of like why I'm telling you. So the weird kind of like scared to go outside thing and the heat thing. Um, during the day I was extremely fatigued and I literally felt like I was dying. Like I would wake up and I'd tell my friends like, I just feel like I'm dying. Um, and I don't know how to explain how that feels like. It just feels not great. Um, my stomach was bloated and I was never hungry. But when I did eat, it just filled up my stomach so much that my stomach was very uncomfortable. So that sucked. Um, my skin became delicate to the hottest, uh, most humid months here, which was a couple of months ago. It's becoming kind of like fall now and it's not as humid. But during that time where I was experiencing my first round of like really I needed to go get some help was there was something wrong with my skin barrier and like my skin was very delicate so like inside of my um my belly button I have an innie and inside of my belly button uh about once a year or so I would get what I thought was like a heat rash or something and I would always treat it with um an antiseptic I forget the word for it right now that's another symptom but like I forget the word for it I can see the bottle in my um, bathroom, but I, I don't remember the word. But anyways, 
um, it's like an astringent. I would put that on a Q-tip and I would put that inside my belly button and in a couple of days it would be fine. But I would get that kind of a lot during this period of time in my life where um, maybe I was very toxic or something. Or maybe it was just a coincidence um, because there really was, I was really susceptible to like what was going on with the humidity and the heat and like my skin was just really delicate. And then I would get that, um, this is embarrassing to say on a public thing, but like I would get like the same heat rash in between my butt cheeks. And like I wouldn't even be able to like drive for a long period of time in like my AC car. So like I had to stop going outside and like walking because I would get like a, a rash or what felt like a rash. Like obviously I don't have like eyes in the back of my head to like look at my butt. But like I got what would what would felt like a rash in between the my butt, <laughs> and um, it just needed like repair, like just needed like extra extra like being very careful, and so um, yeah, I had to be really careful, and so that's kind of like another reason why I didn't really go outside. So um, breakdown of my skin was happening. Um, and that wasn't normal because I lived in a place that was completely hot all the time and I walked for miles before I even had a car and like I never experienced these symptoms but it was just during this particular summer. Last summer I lived in this particular area too and this wasn't like this for me so like this summer there was a real breakdown in my skin where I was just very um, sensitive to like the humidity and the heat. Um, a loss of sex drive. When I did have a sex drive, I could barely feel anything when I was um, trying to feel something. Um, so that was one of my first major indicators that like there was a big thing wrong because previously I could experience pleasure um, in my area <laughs> of my genitals and then all of a sudden I couldn't. It took me forever to actually have an orgasm and then when I did have an orgasm, I couldn't feel the contractions. I couldn't feel the pleasure of it. I couldn't feel my body actually like, like you know, you've had an orgasm before. The spasms or whatever in your muscles, I couldn't feel that. Um, that didn't exist. It just felt like nothing. And um, there was no like release of like, sh like stress or pleasure or anything. It was just blah, nothing. And I was like, that's not good. So that was one of the indicators a couple months ago um, that was happening to me. I had extreme brain fog and a lack of concentration. Again, my words were not coming to me and you kind of have seen that happen throughout some videos. I would stop for a long period of time and not remember a specific word um, or I'd want to say a specific word but I couldn't recall it. Um, I don't have the best vocabulary, but like, I couldn't get to that word. Like I could see the letter of like what it looked like in my head, but I couldn't make it out. Um, my hair started to fall out more. My chest started hurting on the left and right side. And I think by this point, I knew that it wasn't a heart attack because if I was having a heart attack, this was a very long heart attack. Um, or like, why would I have heart attacks on the regular and like not actually have one? Um, so I knew it was something else, but on the left side and the right side, I would have pains in my chest. It was mostly at night and it was mostly dull pain and right as I was trying to go to sleep. So I had a yeast infection that was difficult to treat and it needed two rounds of the um, anti, fungus or whatever, antimicrobial, anti-whatever um, from the doctors. Um, all right, something weird was happening with the sound of text and the, the music that was coming from my phone. I'm a person that listens to music all the time. And on certain days, the, the regular volume that I always kept my phone on, it would like scare me. 
like if somebody texted me right now it would probably kind of like scare my nervous system i don't really know how to like really describe this but it's like i'd get a text and i'd almost feel the vibration of it instead of just seeing that i was i had a text and it sounded like a normal volume it almost sounded way louder oh my god i just feel like i had a text and it sounded way louder to me so yeah that's kind of creepy um but i feel like i conjured up that text <laughs> but it was it it bothered me to the point where like i turned the volume down and i like turned my like my phone away from me so that usually the speakers are pointing towards me so i can hear it the most and kind of just be into it but like i'd have to like put my phone if i was listening to music or whatever away and turn it so that the the sound that was coming out of it was not directing right towards my body does that sound psycho probably but that's how it felt like it felt like i was feeling the sound and it was like scaring my body the only reason um i knew that my body was able to like do that is because i had in the past tried shrooms like years ago i've done uh like not that many recreational drugs but i have done shrooms and i remember my body kind of like being very very sensitive to light and sound during that time and it sort of kind of felt like this it sort of kind of felt like um i think shrooms actually are toxic right so like maybe this is just what my body does when it's tox toxic i'm not sure but that was something that was happening and it still happens um what else days before i would get my period i would be so exhausted i couldn't even get out of bed it's like out for the count a couple of days before my period um i couldn't really leave my bed it was really bad and that wasn't usually the case for me um sometimes okay so i don't know how to explain this either but like at night i guess sometimes during the day there would be like about 30 seconds where i would notice that like i'd have like a a weird sharp incredibly sharp pain in my head in my brain somewhere and it would uh, mostly be on this side but i'd get like a very very bad pain and it would last for only 30 seconds and then it would go away and it was immediate like the pain was fast and sharp almost unbearable almost like brought you to tears and then just as quickly as it came on it would go away and there was no like lingering of the pain it was as if it never happened and this happened before the symptoms became intolerable it was in that period of time where it was like just starting to get weird and um it happened maybe about 10 times during that month and it hasn't really happened since but it was like very clustered around that period of time so i don't really know what to make of that but that did happen to me all right this is where we're getting into the good stuff this is the symptoms during my worst months right before my test results so like between two months ago and kind of like to like yesterday or today so i would wake up from my sleep sweating and um, I would tell like Renee like that I woke up sweating and she's like, oh, that's weird. Like I was like, oh, you don't? <laughs> this is a normal occurrence for me. Um, it's kind of like when you have like the alcohol sweats, like you just wake up like from like your drunken days or whatever. And like you're all sweaty, you're like sweating out the toxins. Maybe that's what my body was doing, but I would wake up from sleep just so like my back drenched, but like in my room wasn't hot. I'd actually sleep with like the AC on sometimes cause like I couldn't just fall asleep cause it was, I was so like uncomfortable in my house because my body just couldn't like regulate its temperature correctly. So I told you about my scalp, the scalp part that was like way worse that I've had chronically and then it was way worse during this time where like it was right before I got um, my blood test results. Um, meaning like way more itchy. The, the area that it normally covered got way worse and um, bigger. 
and um, much more red. And it was like noticeable enough that like I felt like I, I needed to treat it. Before it was just kind of like an annoyance. I had like an itch and I had to itch it like maybe about once every two or three hours. This was like way more noticeable. So um, I slept like almost like the dead <laughs> when I did them out, like was able to sleep. Like I'd sleep with like no dreams. I'd sleep like I was like, I had like a, a real bad illness and like those deep, deep sleeps, right? Like you just wake up and you're like, I don't even remember going to bed. Like didn't remember anything. It was just like very groggy still. Like, it was that kind of like sleep. Um, no dreams. Uh, my body was cold. Like the, the temperature was just cold. Um, the temperature was so cold that the other day when I went to go get my blood drawn, um, I had a hard time giving her enough blood for my full panel that I ordered. And this is the first time this happened to me. I've had my blood drawn a lot during the last year. And um, right before I, I was uh, tested, um, I noticed that I'm like kind of like constantly cold. And um, I don't know if I can show you this, but this is like, she had to like, <laughs> did you see that? Like the, um, the bruise on my arm where she drew, drew the blood because it was morning and I thought that I was just cold because I was in my AC car. But like she, is it like a blood drawer? She, the, I don't know what the, the proper term for it is, I'm sorry. But like she does this all the time and she's like, no, that's, you know, your your veins are just cold. Like there's, your body is just cold. Like the temperature of your body is just cold and like it's not giving me enough blood. So she moved the needle. She had to downgrade the needle so I could get into my little, my little baby vein. And she had to move the needle to a new spot and um, she had to lay a, a heat pack on my arm for a while to like warm up my blood so it could run faster so that she wouldn't um, sit there for like 20 minutes per vial to like fill up enough blood so she could test my panel that I had ordered. So that was different. Um, so yeah, always cold, like low body temperature. Um, I told you about the sweating in the shade. I told you about the words that I can't remember. Oh, when I write down words, like once I started writing down my um, my symptoms in that journal that I told you about last week, um, I noticed that my handwriting was weird. I noticed that my handwriting was like sloppy and I noticed that like I almost had dyslexia. So I would start words and I would spell them backwards and not know that I was doing that. Just as I was just like normally spelling. I was like automatically kind of like writing down my symptoms and like thinking about stuff to put into like my daily entry of my symptoms because that's what I use my journal for. And that's when I noticed that my handwriting was much sloppier and when I wrote, I wrote words that were like incorrect. Um, like the actual handwriting and I'd never really done that before and I was typing on my computer and I was texting on my phone and like it's not the same as handwriting and so I didn't pick up that that was one of my things that was happening until I started writing in my journal because I don't actually really write down handwriting things a lot anymore so when I started my journals when I noticed that my nails were dry and had ridges I have ridges on my nails and the top of them are very dry. I don't know if I've always had ridges or like what, but um, my nails look nice from afar, but close up they're dry AF and um, they're just not doing too well. So I also kind of like tried to like figure out what was wrong with my hair. My hair, never mind the fact that it's falling out, my hair is very brittle. And it's so brittle that I thought that all I had to do was like chelate it. Like I just had to like, I, I know that my like apartment has harsh water. And so I tried um, using a shampoo um, that would remove the excess calcium buildup and all whatever buildup from the shower, from like the water that's in my apartment. That didn't work. My hair is still crunchy. So like it's my actual hair. Um, 
I put argan oil on it. I, I use very expensive, like very nice for you hair masks and all kinds of crap. Um, but my hair is crunchy. Even in the parts that like don't get bleached, they're crunchy. So yeah, not good. Um, I always have acne. You guys have seen that. I've been trying to like deal with my acne for a while, but like during the time where I, just before I got tested for my blood, um, my acne get worse. Maybe it's just cause I'm more stressed, but I don't know. I'm just kind of telling you that's a symptom of what's happening in my body. Um, my heart rate, my resting heart rate on average, um, was around like 60 something before like a couple of months ago and i've noticed like the last two months and a couple of like the last four days it's gone down 15 points since i haven't taken supplements um but from the last two months it's been 75 on my resting heart rate and i haven't really done anything different like i haven't like my stress is the same like a, you know everything's pretty much the same so that's just something that i noticed that my heart rate went up for weeks um about 15 points above my normal and now it's kind of like back and almost lower than my normal average used to be and i haven't done literally anything different besides not take supplements and be very mindful of the b6 that i'm taking in all right so my tingling and my numb feeling would get worse especially when i drove places that's when i noticed it the most so like when i drove i would feel like my the way that i sat in my car for whatever reason like almost immediately put my legs to sleep within the first five minutes of driving somewhere and so like i didn't really want to drive all over the place so like it made my like life pretty difficult um because a lot of my my job um is like i have to like go source things and then sell them so like part of that is finding the things and part of that is sometimes driving places and so i would start avoiding going out places and that i think led me to like being kind of scared of going outside does that make sense sort of kind of um I told you about the heavy feeling legs. Um, I told you about the pain in my left arm. Right before I got my blood test done, my heart rate variation HRV was around 16 to 20, which was even lower than my normal low of 30. So yeah, not, not too good. Uh, when I laid in bed and I held my phone in my left hand, um, my arm would go numb within the first five minutes of holding it like that and normally I could like hold it for a very long time I almost actually traded in my phone because I thought my phone was just too heavy and I actually thought that my phone being too heavy was um creating like a pain in my um arm area the pain that I've had since April but like I don't think that that's the case I think that there's just some sort of blood circulation problem um, related to this whole thing and um, I'm only experiencing it a lot on my left side of my arm and then in my legs um, and maybe that has partially like why I can't orgasm because you need a lot of blood in your pelvis area in order to like a rush of blood like a, a buildup of blood right you need like good blood circulation and maybe that's like one of the things that's you know my whole body is just not doing too well that way so that was one of the things that I noticed is that when I did something with my arm, it would go, it would feel asleep. Like I'd been sitting on it for like days or something. It would go uh, get to sleep so quickly, like abnormally quickly. And like that wouldn't usually be the case if my body was working properly. Um, I have thrush and that is all the symptoms that I kind of wanted to tell you because that's all there was. There was a ton and um, I might make this its own video because there were so many um, and I don't think that not everyone really wants to like sit there and listen to somebody drone on about their 
stuff but hopefully this was helpful um again i am going to try a certain thing um in order to like not be toxic and if it helps me then i will share it but i'm not going to share what i'm going to do because i don't want to put out misinformation that could possibly hurt somebody else if they were you know going to try the same thing i'm going to actually talk to my doctor and when my test result for my final blood um test comes back then i'm eligible to talk to the doctor that um is associated with the company that took my blood so i'm going to talk to as many people as possible and try to get their opinions on how to not be toxic and what i should do and i'm also going to do some research on my own so um I'm, i don't have answers and i don't have like this is how i'm gonna get better like i just have like a general idea of what i need to do now and um that's kind of like where I'm gonna go with that and I don't know really how long it's gonna take to like get better I do know that some people have like a get better get better period and then they go into rebound and then they have a get better period and then they rebound so like I don't really know what's gonna happen for me and I don't really know how long I've been toxic and all these things and i uh, don't know if this is the end of the road for like this explains all of my symptoms and my body just feels really good after this so i could be unearthing some more stuff once this gets cleared up this is just like my first line of like i need to get this better clearly um so yeah i don't really have a lot of answers for you so like i'm sorry if that part's not helpful but i'm trying to be helpful in the long run instead of just giving you short-term answers like my my long-term thing is like please go do your research on your own and get evidence backed by like what's actually happening in your particular body and then get it like a treatment based upon what's happening in your body for you um this is very specific to you know your own body composition so um that's it <laughs> i'll see you guys in my next video but i would definitely update you i'll just like keep it to myself and i will um give you the update kind of like when um i feel like i know more things like maybe i can tell you like this did not work for sure like i tried something for three months i went back and got a blood test my b6 is still toxic so therefore what i was trying did not work well enough or didn't work at all right like i'll i'll give you that information but i'm not going to take you on this like roller coaster ride of like today i'm going to do this and blah 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 blah. i'm going to try something consistently um like if it's very obvious that it's not hurting and if it's hurting then i'm going to stop that right like i'm going to do that but I, i'm not going to take you on like today this is how it feels and tomorrow this is what's going on like i'm gonna just be quiet about this um because i feel like the less impact the other people's opinions and blah 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 the like the more that i can just hone in on like what i feel i need to do and keep out other people's opinions so um it's not that i don't think that you're trying to be helpful or like trying to you know share your own experience um i appreciate that I just don't don't want it um and I, i'm trying to be very clear about that so thank you for watching and i will see you guys in my next video take care